worthy to be praised. Yes. Father God, we come on this morning thanking you, Lord God, for the preacher, Father God. Yes. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you bless him, his, his helpmate, Father God, yes. in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. Father God, and whatever we do on today, Father God, let it be for your glory.
celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the Universal Church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessing, glory, and honor be to God forever. about the importance of diet, the importance of sleep, the importance of sleep, getting enough rest, exercise, amen, and we can certainly, we can certainly uh, prevent a lot of uh, uh, the diseases that affect us, amen. Uh, longevity is, 
is 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 wonderful, amen. But you want to be in your 70s and 80s being able to enjoy the things that you enjoy. But it starts now, starts now, yeah. starts now, starts now. Right. So put all them cupcakes away. Did I say that? <laughs> yes, you did. Maybe said, my sin is uh, ever before me. Uh, that's the right thing to say. Yeah, that's the right thing to say. All that fried yeah, shit. Yeah, that's the right thing to say. All right, all right, all right. I'm not going to meddle. I'm not going to meddle with you. I'm not going to meddle. But it is it is called Outlive, amen. And I do recommend it. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, we are a blessed church. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, and as I look around and I uh, think about all the members and all that we do, uh, my heart just wells up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm just blessed to be in this setting. Amen. Yes. Yes. You're like, don't worry about what other folks are doing. And comparing yourself to other yes. folks. Amen. We are a blessed church. And I know some large churches are talking about with numbers. And a whole lot of foolishness is going on. Amen. You don't have that in new life. Pastor's not running with the usher. Hallelujah. Amen. We not, we... Oh, yes, I am running with the usher today. The usher's first lady. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. But we are a blessed church. We are a blessed church. Amen. We ain't arguing, fussing. And fighting, amen. Amen. Some folks, some churches, they praise the Lord in the sanctuary and go in the parking lot and cuss folks out. Amen. Amen. I've always said we will never, as long as I'm a pastor, we will never have a church fight. Amen. Amen. Money ain't going to be our problem. Money ain't going to be our problem. Amen. Amen. Because uh, our church is built on a solid foundation right. on this rock. Amen. I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. It's offering time, my brothers and my sisters. Come on, bless the Lord. It's offering time. That you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. Asking all, everyone that is in the sanctuary, if you're giving your offering, please put it in the envelope so we can record it. Amen. Amen. And as well, if you're giving online, uh, we have several platforms to give. You can give by way of Cash App. Our Cash App ID is dollar sign N L C C D O C. Again, dollar sign N L C C D O C. If you're giving by way of Giveify, if you have the Giveify app, we're New Life Christian Church in the township of Bloomfield. Life Christian Church in Bloomfield, and if you're giving by way of Zell, the Zell ID is NLCC Bloomfield at gmail.com. Again, NLCC Bloomfield at gmail.com. Amen. Please put your offering in the envelopes provided so that we can record them accordingly. Amen. Amen. And as the tradition of the church, we're going to ask for some marching music.
Gospel of John, in the 19th chapter of John. John's Gospel, 19th chapter, I'm sorry, the 20th chapter, and we'll begin reading at verse number 19. John 20 and 19. International version of the Holy Writ, you will hear these words recorded. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with, the, and with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time we'll have a musical selection from our music ministry. Amen.
He says, on the evening of that first day of the week, yeah. when the disciples were together with the doors locked mm. for fear of the Jewish leaders, okay. Jesus came and stood among them mm. and said, peace be with you. Mm. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed they, that they saw that they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, "Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you." Verse twenty-two says, "And with that, he breathed on them." I want to use for a subject for the next few moments, which I was with the aid to help the option of the Holy Ghost from this thought. Uh, Lord, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we've come to the moment of proclamation. You met us in the study, now meet us in the pulpit. With the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts. Be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. God, we pray God for hearts and minds to receive this word. 
that we may be doers and not hearers alone. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pentecost. 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 Uh, Pentecost is the third uh, festival, the third holiday in our faith tradition. The first is uh, Advent or, or, or Christmas. The second is Resurrection Sunday or uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, and, and today we celebrate uh, Pentecost. Uh, that's the birth of the church. The, 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 day the, the day God gave us the gift of the promised Holy Ghost. Yeah. Birth the church. Uh, in our text today, uh, this is the evening of Easter morning. Uh, after the disciples had discovered that, that the tomb was empty. Uh, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene and Jesus told her to go go tell the disciples that 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 I have risen mm. uh, so so uh, she did what they what she was told but uh, they still didn't understand mm -hmm. so on the first evening of resurrection Sunday they're all in one place they're gathered together and the Bible says that the doors are locked they're behind locked doors y'all well, I mean, the dead boat's on, the chain is on, they, they locked the doors because they were afraid of being killed. Uh, they, 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 their savior, their, their leader had just <coughs> been killed three days prior. Yeah. And, and, and suddenly, suddenly, uh, uh, in this locked room, the Bible says Jesus just appeared. All right. I, I, I like that. I, I like John's gospel. I, I like the way John John uh, uh, talks about Jesus. He John always uh, uh, illustrates the divine, the divinity of Jesus. Uh, and, and look at the beginning of the gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's that's the divinity of Jesus. Uh, when we see the disciples, them cats in the locked room, they're scared. And Jesus just appears. Uh, can you imagine uh, how they must have felt the surprise, the awe? How did you get in here? And uh, at first they didn't recognize him. They didn't, they didn't know who he was. They probably were like, how did in the world did you get in here? And listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, peace. Be with you. Yeah, yeah, that, that was needed. That, that was needed. It, it, it's a greeting, yeah, but, but it, it's more than just, hey, man, what's up, y'all? It, it, it's more than that. Uh, he says, peace, 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 peace. Peace is uh, a, a, a biblical term. Peace, uh, peace uh, means so much. It refers to wholeness and completeness and divine healing that, that, that heals the people. It's, it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's that shalom. He says, peace <clears throat> be with you. Not the peace, not the peace that the world gives, but, but a peace that surpasses all understanding. Not merely a, a, a lessening of conflict or, 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 or stopping an argument, but the relief of a security and a hopefulness that is coming, that only comes through the presence of God. He says, peace Amen be with you. Uh, now, no, he says it twice. Uh, peace be with you. Don't miss that. They needed to hear uh, some a word of comfort. They needed to hear that their, 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 their master, their, their leader had just been crucified. They're scared. And between his speaking, he shows them the marks in his hand. The marks and the holes in his side. And, and it began to dawn on them that this is really Jesus. Mm. Uh, who had been crucified. Mm. Who had died on the cross. Mm. Uh, but is now standing in our midst and he's alive. Mm. <clears throat> and, and it says that the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Mm. Mm. They rejoiced when they... They went from they went from uh, 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 being afraid to now rejoicing when they saw the Lord. This this is a whole this is the whole crux of our faith. Yeah. This is the whole matter right here. Jesus, who was crucified, well, died, mm. buried. 
buried is now alive in the room. Y'all ain't getting this thing. Uh, Jesus that was crucified, died, and was buried is now alive. Now, that's the whole sermon right there, but uh, you don't mind me pushing it, do you? <laughs> the lives, the lives would change from disabling fear into joy. Uh, from hopelessness turned into hope. Yeah. Anxiety now uh, into comfortability in the presence of the risen Lord. Yeah. Uh, heartache and heartbreak now uh, are amazement and wonder and awe because of the risen Jesus that's in their midst. Yeah. <laughs> and they saw the Lord. Uh, the Lord. Uh, now, that, that, that's another great biblical term, Lord. Uh, it, it, it doesn't only mean master or leader. It, it, it means much more than that. It, it, it's one of the Old Testament names for God, um, uh, the Lord. Uh, to say uh, that the disciples saw the Lord is to report that their leader, their companion, the one they had uh, served with and lived with, is now alive, the Lord. Well. Uh, they had hoped that uh, it was true. They, they had stuck their necks out to follow this man. And uh, now the Lord. Well. But when he uh, was put to death, mm -hmm. uh, all their dreams were crushed. Every, yeah. Everything they uh, had invested in they thought was lost. And have you ever been there? Yeah. Uh, have you ever put your all into a relationship? Yeah. Uh, and then the relationship went south. Yeah. Uh, have you all put all uh, your efforts into a job? And then you get a pink slip. Yeah. Uh, they have put all they had, invested all they had in Jesus. Yeah. And uh, he was crucified. Uh, they were down and out. But now they see the Lord is with them. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus coming into their midst uh, as Lord, uh, bringing a peace that surpasses all understanding. All right. Now, you might think that that's the end of the matter. All right. You might think that this is the climax mm -hmm. uh, of of the situation. All right. uh, but my brothers and my sisters, it's not the end. All right. It's just the beginning. All right. uh, he says, peace be with you. Yeah. Uh, it's just the first sentence. Then Jesus continues and says, as the Father has sent me, All right. we're about to mess it up, right. I'm sending you. Right. It didn't just mean for the first century apostles. Uh, it means us as well. Okay. I'm sending you. As the Father sent me, yes. I'm now sending you. Yes. Uh, Jesus was not sent to us as a philosopher. Right. Like Plato and Aristotle. Right. Uh, though he knew higher philosophy than them all. Right. Jesus wasn't sent as an inventor or a, a, a discoverer. Yeah. Uh, but there was nothing that uh, could be invented that he couldn't invent and nothing uh, that needed to be discovered because he knew everything. Yeah. God the Father sent the only Son from heaven to save the world. Now the Son is saying, as I was sent, I'm now sending you. Can you imagine now <coughs> the disciples' uh, sentiment? Here they were, huddled in fear, yeah, right. hiding in a house mm -hmm. with locked doors, mm -hmm. just trying to save their own lives. Well. And Jesus comes and says, I'm now sending you to save the world. Yeah. What are you talking about, Jesus? Mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, escaped. Oh, uh, with the skin of our teeth. Well, now you're sending us back into the public? Well, <laughs> the disciples were on the defensive. Yeah. But now Jesus is sending them out on the offensive. Yeah. Uh, back into the public. Yeah. They were afraid and hiding. Now Jesus sends them to be courageous and bold. Yeah. I'm sending you as the Father sent me. Wow. My brothers and my sisters, we all have a calling. We've all been sent to go into the
the hedges and the highways. Yeah. Uh, so like the word peace and like the word Lord. Yeah. Now he's saying, I'm sending you. Yeah. Uh, they're all huge biblical terms. Uh, but in John's gospel, it's used over and over about Jesus going and being sent into the world. Uh -huh. When Jesus tells his followers, uh, they are uh, now being sent. This is a divine commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the great commission. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you out to save the world. Mm -hmm. uh, God is sending them. That's why they were called together in that uh, room, that first place, uh, wow. in order to be sent. And every time you come to church, wow. every time you come into the house of worship, wow. uh, you're getting a call to go. Uh, wow. You're being sent to go into the world. Wow. It's like being in the military. <laughs> Basic training isn't the end in and of itself. Uh, wow. It's preparing the troops to carry out future missions. Uh, it's like being on that athletic team. You go to practice, but practice isn't the end. Practice just prepares you for the game. That's the real thing. As Christians, every time we gather for worship, every time we gather to study, every time we gather to pray and to praise, uh, these are all uh, just getting us ready uh, to be sent. Uh, we too are sent. Uh, if this sounds like more than you bargained for, uh, well, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, but you didn't get saved just to sit like a bump on the log. You were saved uh, just to uh, eat some cake after church. Come once a week. Put a few dollars in the basket. No, baby bubba. You've been sent to go into the world and to share the good news. I know a lot of folks didn't expect that. But you're called to go. Go into the world. The hedges, the highways, subways and skyways. And compel men and women to come unto Jesus. After Jesus told them that he was sending them. And this is where I want to hang out. The Bible says that he breathe yes. on them. All right, all right. Uh, now, if you uh, have heard any Bible stories, uh, uh, you're familiar with uh, the Genesis story, how God formed man uh, out of the dust. Yes. Uh, a lot of principles there. Uh, but after he formed man out of the dust, uh, the Bible says that he breathed on him uh, the breath of life. Uh, and man became a living soul. Uh, if you're familiar uh, with anything about breathing, uh, breathing uh, uh, it gives you life, uh, brings oxygen to the body. You need the breath. Uh, in Psalms 104 and 29, it says that when you take away a creature's breath, uh, they return to the dust. Uh, but when you send forth the spirit, or yeah. you breathe on them. Yeah. Uh, you're creating new things. Yeah. Jesus breathed on the disciples. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's a sign of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. I'm going to get through this, y'all. Uh -huh. Got a little chest cold. But I feel all right now. Yeah. He said he breathed on him and received the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Received the breath of God. Yeah. In that moment, the risen Christ raised those fearful, faithless followers to newness of life. And when God breathes on you, God gives you new life. Well, the breath of life. Uh, well, what is the breath? The breath in the Greek is called the pneuma. Uh, in ancient Greek, uh, it was a vital part of soul and creativity. And so that's why the study of the Holy Ghost is called pneumatology. It's the study of the Holy Ghost. We don't like to talk about the Holy Ghost, but it's pneumatology. I'm glad that on the day of Pentecost, we receive the Holy Ghost. That's the giving of the Spirit. You see, the breath of the wind 
and the Holy Ghost, they're all synonymous. Uh, when you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're talking about the breath of God. <laughs> Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit is given.
I said, good work you're doing. I said, no, I owe you this. I owe you an amend. He said, I hope it's not a check. Thank God I didn't write a check. And I put cash in it. I put it in his hand. And I apologize. Uh, he said, thank you, and you are forgiven. Now, I don't think it was as much for him as it was for me. Because when I left his house, I felt a freedom. I felt like a weight was lifted off my back. And I have been able to forgive myself. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus said, get the Holy Ghost and go forget sin. Just as the promise in the Old Testament, uh, where the Spirit was poured out on the offering, uh, he said, uh, in the latter days, uh, my spirit. Spirit will be poured out on all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. I mean, in those days right now, it simply means uh, that we are to share the gospel when God breathes on us and gives us the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's important. Uh, that we hear this story today uh, so that Jesus can give us that peace. Uh, peace for our fear. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, once we get the peace, uh, we can see the Lord. And once we see the Lord, the Lord is saying, I am sending you out to go into the world and to forgive sins. In the gospel of forgiveness of sin. That's why Jesus came to forgive us of our sins. The prophets couldn't do it. Angels couldn't do it. God himself had to come down to 42 generations because the prophets couldn't do it. The Bible couldn't do it. So he said, I gotta come down to forgive sins and he died on a cross for you and for me he died for my sins he died for your sins for the forgiveness of sins and the cornerstone of the spirit's work uh, is for us to go and preach the good news of Christ. Oh, right. uh, that's what we're called to do. Yeah. Uh, he said, peace be with you. Yeah. All right. uh, because we need it. And the Lord is now sending us. Yeah. But as he sends us, uh, he'll breathe on us. All right. All right. Uh, each one of us has a life uh, only uh, because of the goodness of God. Yeah, Each of us have faith in Jesus Christ yeah. and hope for eternal life yeah. because of the grace of God. Yeah. Each of us, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is a disciple of Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah. to go forth uh, and to preach the word. The Spirit of God, the breath of God, the divine wind that blows where God wills, blows into our bodies in every moment, keeping us alive. It blows into our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, uh, into our hearts, bringing us faith and new life. And it brings us peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Blows us out into the world where we will be swept up by the saving grace of God. I'm done. Oh, but the state.
study of pneumatology. There's another word uh, when you study pneumatology. Uh, another word for the Holy Ghost. Uh, and that's the paraclete. Uh, we see it in John 14 and 16. Uh, he says, I will pray to the Father. Uh, and I shall give you another comforter. Uh, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you. And shall be with you. So not only does he give us pneumatology. The breath. The wind. But he gives us the paraclete. Now some of you may not know Greek. Uh, you may not know uh, who or what the paraclete is. Uh, but on the day of Pentecost, the paraclete came. Uh, you may not know the paraclete, the promise of the helper, the intercessor, the comforter, the paraclete. Christ is 
already forgiven you. No matter what it is, no matter what you've done, if you ask Christ to forgive you, He's able to forgive. And put your sin in the sea of forgetfulness. It's called repentance. Repentance is simply feeling God is sorry. Asking forgiveness and then turning from those ways. He's forgiven each of us. That's why he came. You are forgiven. And he's given us the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That dwells in each of us. It's not about do you have the Holy Ghost? The question is, does the Holy Ghost have you? We're trying to do it alone, and the Holy Ghost will allow it. But we need to rely more on the Holy Spirit, the gift of God. Is there one today? Let's pray, oh God and our Father, we come thanking you for this Pentecost Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for that day in the upper room where you sent the gift that came in like a mighty rushing wind, filled the room, and landed on each of the apostles as a clothing tongues of fire. We need that Pentecostal fire. This church needs the Pentecostal fire. So that we can continue to lift up the bloodstained banner. Continue to preach this glorious gospel. Whereby men and women will be saved. us in the midnight hours, when friends and family have forsaken, you promised to be our comfort, when we didn't know how we were going to make it, God, you made ways out of no way, when doors were closed, you opened up. Physicians, oh God, walked away scratching their head. God, it was you in that sickness. We thank you for your healing virtue. When we didn't know how we were going to pay the bills, God, you made ways out of nowhere. How we were going to raise those children, God, you were there. Keeping our children, protecting them. God, we thank you now. As we traveled over highways, skyways, subways, God, it was you that guided us, protected our cause. We thank you, Lord, for our loved ones. We thank you for those that you have placed in our lives to teach us lessons. Help us, Lord, to be willing to make amends and then to forgive and then Lord forgive ourselves for God if you forgave us who are we not to forgive ourselves we thank you Lord for that divine gift of forgiveness God we thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives we need you now more than we've ever needed you before. The world is in an uproar. 
schisms and divisions. But God, we know that you're able to bring it together. So God, we pray now for our elected officials. We pray for war, war bound countries. God, we pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray for every nation every continent, oh God. For we know, God, that you hold it all in your hands. And that you can do all things but fail. Yes. So, Lord, we, we're placing it at the altar right now. Our issues, our situations, our uprisings, our downfalls, we place it all at your altar. And God, any way you bless us, any way you work it out, we'll be satisfied. And say that it was you. And then Lord when. Praying days will be over. And books and Bibles will be closed. On that day Lord as we are. Now on our. Living in the land of the dying. On our way to the land of the living. On that last day. Men might say good things. Men might say bad things. We just want to hear you say well done, good and faithful servant. Come on up from labor to reward. On that day, Lord, remember these your servants. This is our prayer. In the matchless, the strong, in the saving name of Jesus. And God's people said amen. Memorial Day tomorrow, Memorial Day weekend. Please remember those that served and protected our freedoms. Amen. Amen. Continue to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Amen. Our upcoming events, Bible Studies Wednesday. Wednesday, we're still, uh, we're back in the book of Acts. Amen. I thank all those that came out to the pen preparing for Pentecost service on last Wednesday, but Bible study has resumed. Amen. Next Saturday is Pocino and Spaghetti Night. Amen. Spaghetti Day at 2 p.m. Amen. So please be here on time. We're going to have a good time, and we're going to get out of here because a lot of people got a lot of stuff to do. Amen. I know. I know there's some things going on, and that is next Saturday. Amen. Uh, and uh, more, more and more churches are joining. Now we have uh, uh, Dr. Watson's church will be joining us for uh, our elder and deacon leadership workshop on June the 17th. Amen. And so uh, uh, we're asking all officers to mark the date. Please be present. Uh, we're going to have a great time with sister churches on our elder deacon leadership workshop. Amen. 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 Youth Recognition Sunday, June 25th. Amen. And we're asking our own minister, Anthony, whatever will be the guest preacher. Will be the preacher. Amen. And as well, we're asking all of our young people to bring your certificates, your diplomas, your we have two graduates this year, very proud of. Zamir Grissom. Jamila Williams. Virgil. Amen. Any other graduates? Any other graduates? Oh, Duran uh, Rowe. Our own brother Duran Rowe will be graduating this year. Amen. Amen. Certainly we want to recognize all of uh, uh, your hard work for this year. Amen. Amen. We're going to set up the, uh, the daycare and have all your certificates, diplomas, so please send your certificates, diplomas, bring them to church so that we can celebrate and recognize you on Youth uh, Youth Day. Amen. We're going to have dances. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. And that is June the 25th. Amen. 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 All right. Now, start purging your closets and tell your friends. Please share this. On the week of June 25th to the 29th, we are doing a clothing drive, a 
clothing drive. So we need 200 bags of clothes. Okay, okay. A minimum of 200 bags. Amen. Pastor dumped, I mean, got rid of 10 bags already. And I think I got five more. Them clothes you ain't worn in 20 years, you ain't put them back on. I'm, you know, I'm saving this because we may have a 70s part. Well, <laughs> go buy something new. You know how we do, we will save stuff. You ain't worn it, you ain't gonna wear it. Amen. I often got to it. The week of June 25th, don't bring it before because okay. we don't have room. But the week of June 25th through the 29th, please bring. Uh, clothes, shoes, unwanted clothes, shoes, you know, stuff that you would give someone else. No, no, you know, we don't want, you don't want to give something. I gave this guy, the store. I gave a guy, I told you, I had this bad burgundy suit, man. I said, I said, let me bless this young, bless this man, I blessed him with this suit. He outside cutting grass in that suit. I got so mad. Gave it to him, I can't. <laughs> what he with it. Amen. But please bring your uh, clothes on for our clothes. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, be blessed. Anybody cooking out, say me hamburger. Amen. Is, uh, we are a blessed church, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Let us stand and be this bit. <laughs> Now and forevermore, and the people of God.